We have a fascinating game, I think, in the Big 12 here. Uh, Oklahoma State on the road at West Virginia. The Mountaineers are three-and-a-half-point home favorites, and this game carries an over-under 50 points. Kicks off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN's main channel, so we get a good close-up look to this one on the national programming. This line opened at uh, a West Virginia minus three and a half. It dipped to minus three, and then it was bought back up. That kind of seems to be the fulcrum point for this game so far. Later week movement is going to be a little bit more evident on where the market lies, so just keep an eye out. If it moves uh, through that three, then there's a very strong market uh, backing of Oklahoma State rather than if it moves beyond three and a half in favor of West Virginia. Uh, they're also forecasting some rain, maybe a little bit breezy, 10 to 12 miles an hour. Uh, that doesn't affect totals very much, but the gusts could when you're talking about 15, 20 miles an hour. Uh, look, this is a bowl game, an unofficial bowl game, I'm putting in quotes, between teams I personally wrote off at the beginning of the season, and they turned out to be just fine, if not kind of good. Uh, I was searching, scouring the internet, turning this thing upside down to find out how Oklahoma State managed to turn things around recently. Uh, Mike Gundy, the head coach, attributes it to the offensive line finally being healthy and guys playing back in their correct position and what they were supposed to do all offseason. At the beginning of the year, they had a bunch of injuries and guys playing out of position, and it really cost them. But one thing to note, offensive lineman Dalton Cooper, a transfer from Texas State, he is still questionable for this upcoming game. That would be a pretty big loss if he doesn't play. Since the bye week, the Pokes have beaten Kansas State and Kansas, and they've averaged 34 points per game. That is not what they had going on at the beginning of the year. The other component to this, I think, is they've gotten running back Ollie Gordon more involved. He had 19 total carries in the first three games, and now he's averaging almost 23 per game. He's rushed for 121, 136, and a buck 68 in the last three games. So he's getting it going on the ground, and the Pokes are better off for it. West Virginia, on the other hand, their defense is pretty good at bottling up run games, at least against teams that line up in a way that they want to run it. They do allow more yards to teams that spread things out, sp- uh, scatter the, the box, force you to have outside run fits like Houston and Texas Tech. They were able to get some stuff going on the ground, not, not anything crazy. When assessing the Mountaineers' defense, though, I do ask people to take out that fourth quarter against Houston. I know it's, I, I know it's hard to, to pick and choose and say, well, we can't count that. It counts, but it's a complete outlier of just one single quarter. Outside of that, they're allowing 15.3 points per game in their last four. So it's like you can look at that and say, well, it's skewed because they allowed 22 points, seven of which being on a Hail Mary, or six of which being on a Hail Mary. I, I, I'm kind of taking that out when I'm assessing them as a whole. Yeah, Brett, I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, this game has a watchability score of 7.2 for weeks. I've had West Virginia as one of my most underranked teams by the AP poll compared to my most deserving rankings. been writing about that now for the lines.com each week. How does the AP stack up against my most deserving? Who's overranked? Who's underranked? West Virginia was consistently showing up in the top three. of These teams are underranked. The Mountaineers rose to as high as number 14 last week in the most deserving before that soul-crushing loss at Houston, as you mentioned. But still, at 4-2, and two, West Virginia has 1.5 more wins than my preseason realistic expectations projected through seven weeks. That's number 16 nationally. I have West Virginia minus 5.5 in this one. It's a 65% win expectancy for the third straight week. West Virginia's number 41 in my power ratings. It's a good... Now, granted, one of those weeks was was an off week, so they didn't play to to add anything or, or, or change a ton. But your your power rating and your power rating rank can move in an off week. We know that, but it just goes to show that from a predictive predictive analytics standpoint, we don't care if you won or lost or didn't play. It's how was the relative performance to the expectation. That, that's what we care about here. Win or lose, how did you perform relative to expectations? West Virginia is still number 41 in my power ra- ratings. Um, it is the highest they've been ranked all season, and they've been that for the last three weeks. This week, the defense is number 45. The offense is number 53. Things were looking bleak for Oklahoma State. You mentioned it, Brett. After a road loss to Iowa State in Week 4, the Pokes clearly regrouped during their off week and after back-to-back home wins against Kansas State and Kansas, as you mentioned, the Cowboys are up to number 52 in my power ratings. I actually had them number 43 coming into the year. Some people said, hey, that's too high, and maybe they dropped to as low as number 70. So for a minute, I was thinking, yeah, you're right. Now this team's starting to look a little bit more like the team that I thought they were going to be coming into the year. Still not quite back to that level, but they have the potential. You win this one you look good doing it we'll see what happens the defense is number 51 the offense is number 59 by my numbers the defenses should be the stronger units on both sides here the difference for me in this game it's in West Virginia uh excuse me it's in Morgantown and the West Virginia offense is the only top 50 unit in this game for me the winner of this game will have the fourth best chance to make the big 12 championship game by my numbers 
but it's still a long shot. Oklahoma's way out in front. Texas is sitting pretty in number two, and Kansas State is comfortably in the third position. But the winner here does move into number four. Bottom line, I have West Virginia minus five and a half. It's a 35% chance that Oklahoma State gets revenge for last year's defeat in Stillwater. One thing I do have to mention about West Virginia is that aside from Penn State in week one, in which they lost 38-15 to with some late scoring that mattered for many people, I... <laughs> I benefited from it. It's fine. Uh, they haven't played a quarterback with a pulse all year. Uh, is is Alan Bowman a quarterback with a pulse? I don't know if I'm ready for that, <laughs> to, to call him that. Hey, he's been fine. Uh, he's probably the best that they have played in recent weeks. What I'm really interested in, though, especially at this juncture, we're at such an interesting juncture of the season where we have enough data points to start figuring these teams out, but at the same time, there's still enough early season noise or noise from injuries and stuff in which maybe we don't really know about it, which teams have changed. I think Oklahoma State is truly a team that's much better than we thought. And, Brett, like, li- listen, for, for someone, and you're in the space too, and you've got your aggregated power ratings, as someone who's doing the power ratings, I can make the case after 12 games – there's still stuff in there with noise, and you don't know sure. exactly. Our sample size is so small in college football, and that's why you see, especially early in the year, some big swings in power ratings. I mean, you're talking six, seven points like in one direction or the other because with a sample size of 12, this isn't baseball where, hey, things are going to work themselves out. The cream's going to rise to the top. That's why in baseball, though, you're seeing it right now in the playoffs. I'm not watching a ton because that's not my sport of choice, but I'm keeping up with who's advancing. The best teams for the regular season aren't advancing because their sample size now, you're playing a best of five, you're playing a best of seven. When you're playing 162 games, law of averages, you're gonna, the teams that are performing at a high level, they're going to rise to the top. We're playing 12. I'd take a best of seven in all of these games. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the data would be unreal. Best of 12, or in a 12 game season, even late in the year, you're going to have teams that you're like, man, I'm just not sold. This is what it says. But it's possible that you a team can fool the model all year because you only have 12 data points. Yeah, and that's why I think that if you're astute or, or hopefully listening to us, we can help you out in getting ahead of those things. <laughs> and I do think that, that Oklahoma State is one of those teams that I think really is actually improved, and I don't know what the market is caught up to. I don't know what the market's adjusted. To be honest, I'm probably going to play over the point total in this because these are two, like you said, good defenses – your model has them, at, you know, in the in the 60s in offense, but I don't know. I, th- I think Oklahoma State's playing currently playing better than that in a week to week snapshot, playing better than that. So if I'm playing anything here, uh, I think I'm going to take over the total. <laughs>